you. Mr. Jones, Mr. Young, care to make any closing arguments? Yes, I do, most definitely, Your Honor. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, today we're here on some sick, sick, heinous matters. Matters that if I were that person, I wouldn't care if I was a prosecutor or not. I wouldn't sit here and call the defendant a man. I'd call him a piece of shit. Excuse my terminology, Your Honor, but I'd call him a piece of shit. Because that's what he would have been. Mr. Jones has put on a great presentation today. Very great. Just like Ms. Keck did on Monday last week. She put on a great presentation. Very abnormal and not her normal voice. Not her normal voice at all. She come forward with a presentation that seems so unnatural just to, just to try to persuade you people. Just to try to persuade you. You see the woman right here on the screen? That's from a video. Does it appear if she's hurt, battered, beat? Persuasion. You can persuade anybody to do anything with words. You can persuade them with actions. You can persuade them with evidence. Sometimes evidence isn't evidence. In the beginning and during opening statement, I spoke on a limited amount of issues, things if you may. One of them was persuasion. Mr. Jones, he's good. He's got words. Being persuaded. People often in life persuade others. As I said, with words, actions, evidence. They also persuade people with lies, deceit, vindictiveness, falseness. They try to place theories together and put stories together and embed them in the minds of jurors such as yourself or people out here in the community. You see Mr. Jones here repeatedly, repeatedly stated, raped, beat, battered, hijacked, to try to embed that in your mind, violating this family here. What family wants to remember that if it's really true? What family wants to have that embedded in their minds? I spoke on being logical in the opening argument. I spoke on how being logical is logical. Correct reasoning, um, cause and effect. I promise not to attempt per to persuade you, to manipulate you. I'm still not going to. But one thing I'm going to tell you before I go any further is I'm not a creep. A person who does them things are creeps. They're sick. What I think they deserve is one of them pistols right there on the man's hips to be taken and having their heads blown off. And that's just being point blank honest. I've never been a creep. Never will I be a creep. Persuasion. Persuasion. The state has presented a case to you formed out of mostly false accusations. Accusations not produced by them. Accusations produced by a declarant. You didn't get to hear that. You heard it from the grapevine. Mr. Jones heard it from someone who heard it from another. And them others heard it from someone. I want to speak to you on some things that we've heard and saw in the last few days. As I've already stated, you heard Miss Keck. She put a heck of a presentation together. Husband Schmidt, you heard from a man who was led to believe from his wife that certain things happened to him, her, excuse me, that certain things happened to her. You heard how their home was robbed, their car was stolen. His wife was raped, brutally beat, brutally beat and thrown downstairs. You heard Mr. Schmidt say he left after 5 p.m. After 5 p.m. In the state's direct examination, you heard him state after 5 p.m., approximately five to 10 minutes. Upon cross-examination and recalling Mr. Schmidt, it changed to a little bit before five, right around five. 
takes approximately five to eight minutes to get to farm and home. 30, 40 minutes there. It put you at 5.50, 5.55, 15, 20 minutes home. All the way out to North Bottom Road, 4300 Bottom Road. Put you after the time of 911 call. And that's a fact. You didn't see that though. You heard Mr. Schmidt state that he was in his garage and he made this call by himself, by himself, at the opening of his garage, is exactly what you heard. You heard that from Mr. Schmidt. But did you not hear the facts though? There was another person on that phone call. It wasn't by himself. It wasn't by himself at all. You heard him speak on entering the home, approaching his wife, talking to his wife, going and retrieving a firearm, bringing it back to his wife, and then going out and making that phone call. Puts us even further after 6.09 p.m. You saw the certificate or police notes of 911 call, CFS report they call it. Mr. Schmidt was specifically asked, did anyone else make that call with him? He said no, by himself out in the garage. Where was CL? Until deputies went in that home and helped her up off the floor. At a later time, she was in the home. That's where she was. Anybody can put a theory together, a story. I could. Although I don't like telling stories. I don't like telling falsities. You did hear that a lot of persons were in Mr. Smith's home this night. A lot. We're talking upwards of seven and nine individuals in a home, in a crime scene, a very violent crime scene, uh, an extremely violent crime scene. Deputies didn't secure that. You later on heard deputies talk of a crime scene in Springfield, scene of arrest where there was a major coincidence, major coincidence. You expect to be looking for two people for a heinous crime and you find a murder 43 feet. Didn't hear that. 43 feet from defendants on my best friend's property. My best friend, an elderly man, 60 plus years old. 43 feet, major coincidence, didn't have nothing to do with myself, the defendant, at all. You would expect right there, wanted for this heinous crime, them individuals, nothing. But what you also heard is they secured the scene. They secured the whole block over a murder. This crime to me is worse than a murder, way worse, by any means, way worse than a murder. They didn't secure this crime scene, though. There was a bunch of them. Some of them right here in the, in the audience, just walking freely through the scene. There were some right over here, just walking freely through the scene, looking for clothes. You heard of blood producing, not just what you've seen by oblique lighting or special effects or flashes. You didn't see the original pictures. You heard of bleeding, blood producing claims, bone breaking claims. And I apologize for, for getting intense with y'all. This is my life on the line for bone breaking and blood producing, abrasion producing claims thrown downstairs. Exhibit number 77 was on the screen for quite some time a little while ago. That was a 77 year old woman, 77 years old, 77 years old to be battered and brutally, heinously beat and raped. 
not just once claimed to be raped, but several different times. You heard about that woman CL being lifted off the floor to a couch. You saw blood by special effects on the floor. But was there any blood on that light gray suede couch? There was none, none at all, not a bit. Was there any on that chair? Not a bit. That was an incontinence issue. And I apologize for talking about the woman's personal issues, but that was an incontinence issue. You heard Mr. Schmidt state that he relayed that the male had taken off CL's top. You did not hear that from CL. You had the opportunity to though. All of you did. I object. Why? Because they didn't want you to hear that. They didn't want you to hear the discrepancies, the complete contradictions. Damn near everything that's been placed forth. I apologize, excuse me again for my language. Hip replacements, throwing downstairs. You can take your inference from that. You heard Ms. Oglesby state that an elderly female presented with sexual assault claims. The CL had tears of a, a centimeter value, three of them tears. The CL was grabbed and held down, penetrated in the anus by penis, finger, and object. Penis, finger, and object. What object was it? Because there's a knife and there's an aerosol can, which is bigger than the diameter of that cup. But you saw what a penis and fingers did to a vagina. Patient declined. That was her notes. Patient declined. These are all things from CL. <sighs> a whole floor, a whole floor. She was throwing down, brutally throwing down floor from one level to another. It appeared to be brutally throwing down set of stairs, tumbled down a set of stairs in exhibit 77? No, why? Because they were lies. That's exactly what they were. Husband Schmidt, or excuse me, I apologize. You heard Nurse Ogilvie's documentation. You saw it, I'd hope. Three bruises, three bruises. After being physically beat, Descriptions that a doctor after her, you did not hear, contradicted. You heard how this assault was at 5.28 p.m. And the admittance, admittance to the hospital was at 19.43, 5.28 or 5.30 as Mr. Jones says, to 7.43 p.m. The admittance time, the exam time started at 10, approximately 10, 9.40 p.m. You heard that from Nurse Oglesby. Four and a half hours later, pictures, saw pictures. Uh, ask for the file info. Computers, they have forensic documentation, file info. Judge, at this point, I, I'm, I'm going to object. There was no evidence of, of this, and there's no evidence of tampering. Sustain. <laughs> Admittance times do not lie unless you can be persuaded, unless you have connections. Nine or 7.43, time for admittance to blessing. You heard both daughters state that they arrived to the scene after Deputy Lohmeyer. Where is Deputy Lohmeyer? Deputy Lohmeyer is not here today. He arrived at 6.36 p.m. They arrived after Deputy Lohmeyer and was outside. You heard them both say for over an hour, Admittance time was 7.43 p.m. I don't have to lie to you. I don't have to feed you a story. That was the time you heard it. Nurse Oglesby, 
They waited outside for over an hour. And then the daughters proceeded into the scene for a while. The daughter's back there. And then took CL to the hospital. Six, after, arrive after 6.36, wait outside an hour. At 7.36, proceed into the scene for a while. Connections. How did she get to the hospital at 7.43 p.m.? They were sure about them times. They were sure about waiting for over an hour. One, ever, one even said an hour and a half. When you have money, you have connections. Judge, I'm going to object again. There's no evidence of that, and frankly, his fanciful tales are getting a little tall. There, I'll sustain there was no evidence presented to support that argument, Mr. John, if you would continue with your argument, they, please. They say there was no evidence. 743 is on the documentation. All the times are on the documentation. The daughters presented evidence right here on the stand. They were sure about it. They weren't sure how long they were in the scene, but they were sure about being outside for over an hour. From 43... 4300 Bottom Road, all the way to that hospital. And you've been at the scene for over an hour after 636. I'll just leave it there. You heard via Nurse Oglesby the fact that CL, a 77-year-old woman, was still having consensual sex. That was on the documentation form, too. But Mr. Jones objected to it. It was on that form. Nurse Oglesby read it off via the vagina and the last and in the last three days outside of assault 77 years old we all know it's common knowledge once you pass a certain stage and age in life you don't secrete lubricants naturally where did the marks come from with that consensual sex in the last three days. You heard what CL was supposed to have related to that nurse, but you did not see the statement. You did not hear it from the person who spoke these claims originally. Next, you, you, you saw a gas station attendant appear on the stand. A gas station, a gas station attendant and attest to a gas station video at 8.03 p.m. and later. You heard him say that he saw a plastic bag. Who told him to say that? Because he clearly stated after cross-examination that he wasn't sure, just a bag. Who told him to state that a bag that was not in defendant's possession at the time? A bag of jewelry. Mr. Joseph stated he didn't exit that gas station to see the emblems on that car. I won't concede that I won't deny the car. How did I get in it? You didn't get to hear that. You heard him say that the defendant appeared normal. Does a man who just did these things appear in his hometown where he's very well known and just seem normal? Just going into a gas station, just gambling. Does that happen? No, that's not common. That's not common, not with me. That's not common. People don't just do that. I don't do drugs. I don't get high. I don't lose stability. Sergeant Lohmeyer stated in response to a car hijacking, he went to the scene 18 years on the force. And I apologize, I'm gonna take a little while because this is my life. Sergeant Lohmeyer stated 18 years on the force. The details, I can't remember. I don't recall. Could not remember who arrived on the scene. Could not remember. He was the second, but could not rem remember who arrived on the scene after him. Guess who arrived on the scene after him? The top guy in the whole department at that time, Sheriff Rich Wagner who didn't make a report, who did not make any kind of report. How do you not remember your top superior in the whole Adams County arriving? She 
She appeared on the floor, he stated. He, stated. he saw her on the floor. Couldn't remember a description of clothing. 18 years on the force, nobody can remember clothing. Nobody at all. I'm not giving you a theory like Mr. Jones did. I'm giving you facts of what was presented right there on that stand to take my life. No shorts, pants, not whether it was a dress. Nobody knew what it was. Nobody out of 10 people, nine people, eight maybe at the minimum, knew what she was wearing. She could not get up off the floor until deputies helped her up. Let me address another issue. <clears throat> out of all these deputies and daughters and family members, <clears throat> did you ever hear one say, I helped her up? Ever? No, you did not. Nobody knew. That's odd, right? Nobody knew who helped CL up off the floor. Why? Probably because she wasn't on the floor at all. Listen to the 911 call. Sergeant Lohmeyer was in contact with and talked to CL most. He stated that. Everything, says, everything Sergeant Lohmeyer stated to come from, and excuse me for my analogy, but the horse's mouth, the person who spoke this, unsure about things he should know, completely sure about things that were factually different if you would have heard them from that mouth. Yes. Keith Kenny, Keith Kenny stated that on the scene of arrest, he cut the strap on the purse as defendant was laying on the ground. He also testified to the rosary being found in the defendant's pocket, but it was intact. Look back in your notes if you took them, it was intact. That rosary on the screen you've seen in the last week, it was broken. Minor detail, but still. It adds to a whole bunch of ridiculousness. Nothing about a pill bottle, did he state? Nothing. Nothing about a pill bottle. Adams County placed that to, next to that purse to associate it with another crime. Objection, Your Honor. There is absolutely no evidence of that, and he's making stuff up. I am. Sustained. I am. Well, I questioned three different officers of the law as to the specifics of that chair and that purse. Not one of them said anything about a pill bottle. That pill bottle is associated with another criminal act. Objection, Your Honor. There's no evidence of that. Sustained. Make your arguments based on evidence presented during the trial, Mr. Young. CSI Field, where's she at? She's a very intriguing woman, investigator. I loved how she pulled out that laser. It almost placed a smile on my face. Probably one of the most honest people here today. However, she stated that she only entered one footprint. Objection, Your Honor, that's not what she testified to. Into evidence. Uh, overrule the objection, it is argument. Into evidence, that was a Reebok footprint. But that she cleared everybody else, family, because she got footprint pictures from the hospital where Deputy Bowden later went. She cleared everybody else, though, because, well, they wear boots, standard items that look different than the natural shoe. She's also testified to a Nike imprint over a Reebok imprint. She looks for fingerprints with her oblique lighting and high technology instruments, finding none in the whole scene. She found none, not one. You may ask yourselves, why, out of all them tests that the scientists put forth, there was not a single footprint for Karen Blackledge, not a single fingerprint, and Karen Blackledge was to have touched everything with fingers. No DNA for Karen Blackledge. I'm not going to bat for her. 
I'm stating that it's odd. You never, never heard once. Everything was excluded. Nor did she find any DNA when she swabbed, but for one place, a safe. A safe handle with two contributors. Assume contributor, contributor CL. Other contributor alleged to be myself. That's what the reports say. Evidence as they say. The man who always touches this safe is sitting here in the audience. Always. He stated by many be the only one to touch this safe. That the kids normally don't touch it because it's covered by a partition or a wall of some kind. The only man who ever touches this, and it's built into a wall, as you saw, in a basement. What's the likeliness that he disinfects, cleans, wipes it every time he touches it? Guess what you also heard? His DNA wasn't there at all. Not at all. That's odd, right? Very odd. You heard it. Mysteriously not there. What's the answer to that one? An objection. Miss Field, as I stated, she was a unique, intelligent, crafty individual. I loved it when she pulled that laser light out. I commend you, Miss Field. Investigator Shoney here testified that he was called for to 4300 Bottom Road. The same details that everyone else could attest to. Home invasion, criminal sexual assault, <clears throat> kidnapping, titles. He couldn't attest to clothing that the declarant was wearing. He, he couldn't declest, excuse me, attest to the order that other deputies come in. And nobody know anything about deputies and their orders or Anything of such, she knew about titles. What investigator Shoney could do, he could tell you the exact denomination value and the amounts of bills in a bag, in a purse, not a bag, excuse me, a purse found at the scene of arrest. He ran down denomination values and the exact count on that stand but couldn't tell you details of things that should matter in law enforcement. <laughs> what investigator Shoney did was a search and seizure of evidence at 1906 Cornell. He couldn't attest to a scene that he was at at 6.58 p.m. on 11 9 of 21. I don't remember. I don't calls. They were in abundance. And you yourselves heard this stuff on the stand. I don't remember. And I don't recalls. Investigator Miller. She arrived at 7.18 p.m. Then later stated that she observed Timothy Schmidt in the garage calling credit card companies disabling cards <clears throat> it's not the information I received it was objected to were, your, were yourselves showing the lineup that investigator Miller attested to, that she organized? No, you weren't. I attempted to enter that. Another objection. A lineup showing no positive identification. Judge. And laughs and giggles. Judge, I object. He's talking about things there's no evidence of. His closing argument is supposed to be talking about the evidence that was introduced, not his fanciful theories and conspiracy theories. Conspiracies. I'll sustain the objection. There was no evidence of your honor, uh, or not, Mr. Gunn. Your Honor, uh, Miss Miller attested to 
Pero ok. Forensic scientist, a footwear expert, given one shoe brand as stated a while ago. She wasn't given that Nike brand or that impression. No one else in the scene wore Nike shoes that were known were, were of knowledge of. None. Not even the person who admitted to being there. Who's already been sentenced to 40 years. Whose Nike shoes were those that CSI Field found? You might ask yourselves why a big guy like myself would take two to four times. I'm at a loss. Two to four times or whatever it was. I believe it may have been three or four to kick a composite wooden door in. Not me. Not me. I build homes. I know what real doors are, real wooden doors. I know what composite wooden doors are. That door wasn't taken three or four times with me. Who wore them shoes? Macy Juski, a DNA, a DNA, excuse me, a DNA analyst. Every test before this woman, you heard her state, excluded myself. Every single one. Every single one. There was a test to on that stand, excluded myself. And that was a fact I asked her to read them off. Dexter McGill, honey. Excluded myself. She spoke of how they passed their test with 100% surety. <clears throat> how tests can, cannot be false. She spoke of the different methods used to test 100% sure, no doubt about it, right? She said that. Until I cross-examined her. Then she got up her own stand, and when I asked her about a test done by a scientist, she stated his findings, which were excluded. You also heard Mason Juski test to the fact that the contributor count went from one contributor on the inner pad of that depends in Dexter McElhiney's testing. One contributor means that would be one person, CL. Two, two contributors in her report number four. Hmm, 100% sure, right? Again, you heard her testify to the fact, or I should probably say the opinion that in item 1H2, a swab from the outer waistband of that depends went from one contributor in Dexter McElhiney's testing, 100% sure test, to five contributors in her testing. Five contributors. I'll stand here while somebody tells me how that's possible in 100% sure testing. Five contributors. Five? On a Depends diaper, a personal diaper? Depends? How did it go from one to five with 100% sure testing? Review your notes. I hope you took them because that's the fact that Mr. Jones objected to that one. Quite odd. I want to point out one thing to you ladies and gentlemen of the jury. One thing of very high importance that should seem very logical to all. She also stated for and on the record that she did not test the actual depends. She tested the sample of Dexter McElhiney. Yes, she did. She did, she surely did. That can of 409 spray alleged to be held by defendant to have sprayed some elderly woman in her privates and on her body. I'm sickened by those claims. I'm sickened by it.
defendant was to have held this can and sprayed her, but there was no DNA on that can. On a ridge button I've got the pictures, you've seen it. No DNA on that can. You heard Mason Juski, no DNA for defendant, number of contributors two. I wanna talk about the knife. This is a big one. This is a very, very big one. This knife with a cloth handle, and a cloth handle slash string, shoe string it looked to be. You've seen it in person. Your Honor, may we present the exhibit of the knife, please? Just so the deputies can see it. Mr. Young, you can present it. I don't. Deputy, would you present the exhibit to them? It's the one standing up right there in the box. Would you please just show it to them jurors? And this is a very important issue, jurors, patient people. Would you please show the knife, the knife itself, Mr. Hummer? I can't unseal it. Can I unseal it? Can you please unseal it? Just show him the knife. It was unsealed once already. Mr. Jones? Judge, there are photos of it. He doesn't have gloves on. I'm not going to let him unseal it without gloves on. We're, we're, there's a photo of it. Can we just use the photo? You God's saw... Sake. You saw him pull it. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Hummer, you're fine. Thank you. You saw Mr. Jones present the knife right here in the middle of the floor. It had a cloth string around it. No DNA for myself or alleged co-defendant. Alleged co-defendant who was supposed to have held the knife. Two contributors, both being determined to be included, CL and her husband, they were included. If you leave it to Sergeant Lohmeyer, he states the declarant told him the male gained the knife and utilized it against CL. Others say, Ms. I'm Black. Sorry, repeat that. If you leave it to Sergeant Lohmeyer, he states the declarant, CL, told him the male gained the knife and utilized it against CL. Everybody else states Karen Blackledge. Then you have Deputy Ruth Bowden. And please, please, patient people, pay attention. You have Deputy Ruth Bowden first on scene. The only deputy who actually walked through the whole scene and observed things with Mr. Timothy Schmidt right here. When I asked her what kind of knife it appeared to be, she said just a regular knife. I said, so, a kitchen utensil? What did she say? I'm sure you remember this. She said, yes. I said, just a regular kitchen utensil. Yes. That right there is a railroad spike with a cloth string handle around it. <coughs> a kitchen utensil, though, from the only deputy who walked through the whole home. That's major. It's called for reasonable doubt. Then you have the stain on the floor where CL was to be seated. Item 4A, stain from kitchen floor living room. Number of contributors was one. Where a woman was supposed to have been raped several times and then sat directly down on that floor. You saw the chair, saw the floor, red blood stain. One contributor. Name me one person, one male or female, who has sexual penetration is getting off on something of that nature and doesn't secrete sperm that many times, or after that many times. One contributor to that stain. <laughs> Analyst Macy Juski answered what touch DNA is. It's the genetic information recovered from Epithelial cells, skin cells, left behind when a person makes contact with an object. Easily left behind. To be grabbed and pulled around one's home by arm is likely to leave a bruise or a mark. You didn't see any bruise or mark on an arm described in them diagrams, that medical forensic documentation form. You didn't hear one attested to. 
nor did you hear of any DNA where she was supposed to have been grabbed and led around at home. Not mine, at least. All you heard was Mr. Timothy Schmidt's DNA on that sleeve of that left or that, that Navy blouse. I pointed them out with Annalise Masajewski for the record. Them are facts. Facts, real facts. You didn't hear a very important fact. I waited for the state to place forth. Judge, I'm going to object. If the jury didn't hear it, it's not evidence, and he can't talk about it in closing argument. Hmm. Overrule the objection in the area, Mr. Cohen. Judge overruled it. You know why? Because I think he knows what I'm getting at. He did not hear the fact that there was no DNA in or on that woman. None. After being penetrated, I believe, five times. No DNA in or on that woman, period. But what you also did not hear is no male DNA, period. And that's in the documentation too. I didn't disclose that or question that because I wanted persons to be honest. I can't stand on honesty. No male DNA, period. Except for husband Timothy Schmidt up under the fingernails. Hmm. Ask yourself after numerous penetrations by a male organ, why there was no male DNA. And I know some of you have frowned against me since you've been here. Some of you probably still frown against me. But let's be logical. Let's be extremely logical. No male DNA, period. No secretion of sperm. Fingerprint analyst Brian Long. You heard that there's no DNA on that can, so we make up for it with a print. One singular fingerprint on a cylindrical object. I asked Mr. Brian Long, did he observe for streaks or smears such as fingerprints sliding? He said, no, he didn't observe or analyze for that on a cylindrical object. Defendant, our defense didn't receive certain information to analyze it himself. Objection, Your Honor. I apologize. You weren't in here for that. I apologize. Thank you. Sorry, Your Honor. Um, Dr. Atticum Goomba, she testified a week, that a week later she saw the declarant at QMG. Quincy Medical Group here in town, a week later, and agreed to questions that you could tell she knew were coming. Why? Because it's pre-planned. She attested to, or excuse me, she stated it herself right on the record, as a doctor, you always believe the patient. Always believe the patient. It saddens me. Because I know that people, I know of people who have succumbed to pill habits and almost kill themselves over a doctor just believing them. Them are her words. You always believe the patient. A week later, she could see marks or evidence of a sexual assault. A week later. You saw the markings, three bruises. Dr. Attic Goomba didn't testify to the fact that the lower left knee was pigmentation, something that's been on that woman's body for years. I have it. I wasn't able to present it. 
them are our words. And this is my life. I ask you, is that logical? To always believe the patient? Most times, yes, but not always. Officer McMahon, you heard Jake McMahon state that there were numerous drawers and cabinets open and a knife left right in the middle of the floor. You also heard him state that he did not go into that home. He did not cross that threshold. That knife, if the end of that table there is the doorway, and that table is about the length of that partition of wall, and there's an alcove here, and a knife is sitting back here by a sink, how does Mr. McMahon see these numerous drawers open and this knife sit back here in this alcove on the floor, but never went into the home? You heard him state that. You heard him state that there was numerous drawers open, cabinets. You saw the pictures, did you not? You saw the pictures, one drawer, no cabinets open. It's quite odd, right? Let's be logical. Mr. McMahon didn't know what to say to that right here on the stand. I asked him what spoliation of a crime scene was. Spoliation is like contamination, tampering, altering, moving things around. That's what that is. Either the scene was spoliated, contaminated, which we already know is contaminated. Many people are walking through it. Or else the cabinets, cabinets and drawers just weren't open. The state presented that right there themselves. The state did. The ones trying to persuade you of these heinous and sick crimes by myself, somebody who's never been associated with anything like this before. <sighs> Mr. McMahon cannot see through walls, just like you and I can't, just like nobody here can. He could not see through that wall in that picture. And if that doesn't make you a believer of false information, I don't know what does. As I said, a knife was far and recessed into a recessed alcove. That knife that was to have touched DNA on it, on a string handle. Mr. Smith's knife, which he could not remember if it was a rubber handle or a cloth handle. Mr. Smith was on the stand stating, well, I don't know if that's a rubber handle or a cloth handle. Touch DNA just by touching an item. Something Karen Blackledge was supposed to have carried around and threatened a woman with. I'm perspiring right now. Why? Because it's my life on the line. If I'm committing a crime, I'm perspiring. There's DNA right there. Nobody's but Mr. Schmitz and CLs. And it's been tested. You heard Mr. McMahon state that he went to Springfield to the scene of arrest where there just happened to be a homicide feet from myself in place of apprehension. One of the biggest coincidences you will see in a lifetime. A drug related, gang related homicide. It was taped off, as I stated earlier. It was very so taped off. In my calling to Miss Miller, Deputy Miller, she states that she arrived at 718 as we've already confirmed. You heard me ask about the procedure and whether officers or citizens are to help an individual identify or give clues to a subject in a photo lineup. She said, not normally. It's highly against the law to do that, to point people out. In reference to my jewelry, my rosary, my watch, 
a complete different watch than the one CL wore. Investigator Miller gave all of us here the answer of, I just processed these items as Springfield gave them to us. Springfield didn't give her them items. Springfield didn't give her anything that I had on me. Why? Because CL cleared them items. Yes, she did. She cleared them items herself. Objection when I asked her to read off that paper. Objection. That was Miss Miller's report. How do you think she come to that conclusion? She obviously had to talk to the person. That rosary. Thank you, Sister Mary. It wasn't CL's, but it was used against me just as all that other jewelry was. Let me tell you something about that jewelry, excluding the rosary. Let me tell you something about that jewelry that was on myself and then pictures that Mr. Timothy Schmidt attested to as being his wives. You asked the state to present them jewelry items to you right now. They never will, but they acted as if they did right here in this, in this room. Promise you they can't go down to the evidence room and ever retrieve them items. They presented false information to you. I just sit there and let it ride because, well, I had to prove to show you that I'd already released them. Exhibit 57, jewelry on myself, just as this young man here is wearing a necklace. I was wearing two of them, a watch and a bracelet, an $11,000 classic Austin watch, a man's watch. They've been released. They're not here in evidence, as Mr. Jones stated. States use exhibits and items that were never in my possession. Exhibit number 12, which is also exhibit number 15, gold watch brooch and Star, Pack, Star Trek pin and watch. One and the same. Physical versus picture. They weren't found in my possession. Mr. Mr. Jones here stated they were. You heard, you jurors heard Deputy Miller when asked about relaying to several individuals a claim of penetration by a can, a full standard size aerosol can. Ladies, we know that's not possible outside pregnancy. Men, we also know it not. Why would she present them claims? Because I'm gonna tell you something. If you saw the truth for what it was from the person spoke these original claims, you would see that that wasn't one of her claims. Why was Deputy Investigator Miller going around saying these things to everybody? Standing out here outside the courtroom at times about a year ago, stating these things two other person's family members who said, man, that just doesn't seem logical and contacted me. <laughs> People I don't even know. You never once heard a deputy say they relayed that to her. Never once. You may ask yourselves why a deputy, a professional, would present that type of information. Why? Because Brad Leon's the bad guy. Brad Leon's so ruthless. He's, he's a sexual pervert, a deviant, a home invader, a hijacker, a kidnapper of elderly women. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. At this point, we don't even have knowledge that there was 
three one centimeter tears. We have what has been attested to, but look at the things that have been attested to. Penetrated with a cane of that size, male or female, we're not walking after that. That's a violent act. A can. It's approximately 10 to 11 inches long. About that big. Bigger than the diameter of this cup. We're not walking after that. We're not sitting in a photo lineup laughing and smiling about how people look with big ears. <coughs> Ice burns. I want to address every issue, and I apologize again, but ice burns, do we wait forever to put them out? We have a 911 call alleged to be made at 609 by one person. Hmm. Hmm. Do we wait when they give that information of a plate number? or 627 when officers get there and we've had time to figure it out and give them that? Do we wait all the way until approximately eight o'clock to put an is burnout? out? Which is the same thing as a bolo, be on the lookout. Stop them people. Stop them people from committing crimes. Stop them people from doing these heinous things. Stop them and apprehend them. We don't care about the information of who it was. But in Adams County, these officers right here, they waited for a car that was easily identifiable, a 2018 Toyota Avalon stating ABS on the license plate. They waited for information. Huh, information. That's like saying, hey, let this child molester go out on bond and commit more crimes and wait to convict him. So he can do it more times. You didn't get to see that evidence either. I tried to draw it out. That evidence was in video form. <coughs> video form. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you're human beings. I'm a human being. Logical. I'm having trouble understanding some of these things. How people lie so much in this occurrence. How people place forth I don't knows, I don't remembers. How persons only know kidnapped, raped, hijacked titles. But they don't know details when questioned on that stand. Details that persons should never ever in their life forget. Deputies or family members. Nobody knew details. Approximately when we left the, for the hospital. Didn't know. But you knew how long you waited outside. Over an hour. Hour and a half. Well, that puts us past the time the documents on the admittance say. On the documents on the front, the forensic documents say. Admittance time. Puts us well over that. Hmm. How? I'm having a hard, hard time understanding how a 911 call was made by a husband in the garage and stated to only be him. How it was made on 11 9 21. How CL was to have bled so much to be seated on a quilt. Her husband Schmidt. How she was seated on a quilt. But that quilt, where's it at? wasn't taken into evidence. You saw the pictures. Would you like for me to attempt to pull the picture back up? That quilt in color form had no color red on it. It was not taken into evidence and tested. Take into consideration yourselves. Just think of that scene in that home. They only showed right there in the living room area. 
what criminal violates somebody with these objects and leaves them right there? Right there. Right there. Next to where a woman was brutally raped. I don't even know a dumb criminal that would do that. Right there. It just looks like a setup. Who am I to determine anything, though? I wasn't there. I wasn't wearing them shoes. Why the pants that could have been filtered with DNA that CO was wearing to the hospital, you heard. Daughter Ilsa Terrell back there. She still has them at home. Hmm. Think of that, and then think of the fact that there was no DNA. The fact that there was no DNA in or on this lady. Having a tr I'm having trouble understanding how seven plus persons were in a scene to have free reign. How deputies assisted CL off that floor. But no one ever said, yeah, I did when I questioned him. Not a one of them. Violently throwing down them stairs. At 77 years old. If somebody did that to my granny. She, she's, a, she's a tough old gal. But she'd probably be hurt with broke bones, lacerations, contusions. Bleeding. She may be dead. That's a standard nine foot drop if you're going straight down. But to tumble downstairs, be thrown downstairs, ask yourselves what that would do to you. I'm a tough youngster, 36 years old. That would harm me. That would harm me a lot to be violently thrown downstairs. <clears throat> I'm touch base on a few more things and I want to let you all go because I don't like entertaining these type of things. You heard from several persons. Well, I may, I may be wrong. I've heard from several persons because I've seen it all. You've heard from a few how the female was the worst. Does anybody remember that? The female was the worst of the two. Hmm. The female was the worst of the two. Everything you hear from me is facts that has been presented, except for a couple inferences I have made. But they're facts. They derive from facts. Anything I state here today derives from facts of a discovery put together not factual happenings. You heard that the female was the worst of the two. Hmm. Find that hard to believe. Find that very hard to believe. I would expect myself, if Joe was to rape Sally, brutally beat her, and throw her down the stairs, and Joe had an accomplice, who walked around going through items, threatening. I would expect that Joe was still worse than the accomplice. Brutally beat, raped, <coughs> but the female was worse. Call him back up on the stand and ask him again. Ask him all who was worse. Hmm. That's coming from, excuse my analogy, with the horse's mouth. I have a hard time understanding still that the state has presented that railroad spike. <clears throat> but the only deputy who really went to the scene said kitchen utensil. If you look back on all the testimony 
there was more I don't knows or I don't recalls than anything else. It's supposed to be one of the most ridiculous and rememberable criminal acts locally ever. You jurors aren't numb to some of the facts. You jurors aren't numb to things you've probably heard outside of here. Yeah. Probably one of the worst crimes I've ever heard of in history. But out of officers Bowden, Lomar, McMahon, Shoney, Summers, Miller, daughter Ilsa Terrell, daughter Heidi Young, and husband Schmidt. Nine persons, and no one knows details that matter. Except for hijacking, kidnapping, down on the floor, and went to the hospital. I just want a man's life taken. I, the defendant, I came in here ridiculously unprepared. State said don't hold that against me. I don't expect you to. I expect you to pay attention to the facts. Remember the facts that Mr. Jones did not state in his closing argument. He stated a theory. He stated a theory. A theory. But does he know the truth? Does that man, Mr. Schmidt, back there even know the truth? Does anyone know the truth? No. The person that knows the truth is gone. And I feel for that family back there. I feel for them. Because if somebody would have really done these things to my grandmother, I'd be in a killing mode. I feel for what they've been led to be believed. I came in here telling you jurors that I would show you things, show you descriptions from the horse's mouth. I was not able to. You should have been entitled to see that because it's a lot different than being presented here. A high level of reasonable doubt is what you've seen today. You've seen things placed together Want to know what you did not see? Something the state says they had. A co-defendant who's sitting right over in that jail. Why did you not see her? Ask yourself. I can't say it's against court rules. Although I should, and I will, she's a liar. She did some stupid, stupid things when she shouldn't have. I ask you jurors here today to be logical. I value you for your time. I do because myself, I don't know if I'd be able to sit through this and listen to this shit. Excuse me, I apologize, man. I don't know if I'd be able to sit through here and listen to this like y'all have. I'm not a heinous, perverted creep. I do not go around robbing people. My two greatest friends are elderly people. One just happens to be 76 years old. She was my next door neighbor. Never. My best friend in the world, he's 62 years old. Just turned 62. Words can bring harsh comments especially when spoken in a slanderous and demeaning way, such as the way Ms. Keck presented them last Monday, doing what is considered their jobs, what is considered their jobs, to take a man's life for 
for something they believe or have been led to believe to happen. What they perceive to be true. There have been a lot of words spoken, words that can determine my life. You people determine it. You 12 right here, right now. You know, I'm going to stop reading from the paper. Although I'm not really reading from it. I'm going to read from the heart. Because that's who I am. People laugh. People think it's a joke. Really? Okay, they have their opinions. I've always been a caring person. Considerate, loving. My mama taught me better than this. She didn't teach me to go out and do these things, nor did I do them. Please stop, man. You've been presented with some very sick things. Some very sick. Things that are not true. Experts. Experts can attest to what they believe. What they believe. <clears throat> what they believe. If you want the truth, I'll tell you the truth. If you want the truth? The truth is I wasn't there that night, but I'm very aware of who certain people are. That's the truth. The truth would hurt people in this courtroom today. Ask for the rest of the evidence. Ask for the rest of it. So you can send me home where I belong. Because I'm not a sick, perverted creep. Not at all. Chad, I'm not a sick, perverted creep at all. Thank you.